Let's see how to find the node with a given key in a binary search tree. So for example, if we want to find the node that has key 3, we would need to find this node and return it. How do we actually do this? Well, we can use the binary search tree property to do this efficiently. According to the binary search tree property, for each node, everything in the left subtree has a smaller key and everything in the right subtree has a larger key. For example, if we consider the node 6, we know that everything in the left subtree is smaller than 6 and everything in the right subtree is larger. And this is true for each node. So let's see how to actually use this to find a node with a specific key. So let's say we want to find a node with key 3. The idea is to start at the root node and check if the key we're looking for is the same as the key of this node. In this case, 3 is not equal to 6. So what we do, we compare the key with the key of the node. In this case, the key is smaller than the key of the current node. This means that if this key is present at all in the tree, it must be in the left subtree. It doesn't make sense to look at in the right subtree because everything on the right is larger than 6 and what we're looking for is 3. So it only makes sense looking in the left subtree. So what we do, we recursively try to find the key in the left subtree. So we will now have root 2. And we again do the same thing. We check, is 3 equal to 2? No, it's not. So we compare. This time, 3 is larger than 2. So if it is present in the tree, it must be in the right subtree. So we call the function recursively, this time with root 4. And we check, is 3 equal to 4? No, 3 is smaller than 4. So we would move to the left. Again, we compare, is 3 equal to the key of this node? The key of this node is 3. So we found the node we were looking for, and we would return it. What if, on the other hand, we were looking for key 10? which in this particular tree does not appear. So we will again start at the root. Because 10 is larger than 6, we will move to the right. Again, 10 is larger than 7, we will move to the right. And 10 is larger than 9, so we would go to the right. But this time there is no right, so we would return null to indicate that there is no node that has such key. Let's now see how to implement this. We have a function called findNode, which takes the root of the binary search tree and the key that we're looking for and returns the node that has this key or null if there is no node with that key. The first thing we want to do is to check if root is null, because if root is null, the tree is empty, so there is no node with the key we want. So we will just return null. But if the root is not null, we compare key to root. First we check if key is equal to the key of root. In that case, we found the node that we were looking for, so we just return it. Else, if the key is less than the key of root, then we move to the left. Because if this key is present at all in the tree, it must be in the left subtree. So we recursively call our function, passing in as root the left child of root, and then the key that we're looking for. And we return whatever we get back, because that would be either null if there is no node with that key, or that would be the node with our key. And the remaining case we need to handle is if the key is greater than the root key. In that case, we would need to look for the key in the right subtree and return whatever we get back.
and this is the whole function. Let's verify that this function works by running through some examples. Let's say we have the same tree we've seen before, and the key we want to find is 3. We would call our function findNode passing in the root of the tree, so this would be 6, and the key we're looking for, so 3. In this case, when we indicate root with 6, we mean the node that has key 6. The first thing we would do is check is root null, root is not null. So we would compare the key with root key. Is key equal to root key? 3 does not equal to 6. So we check is the key less than root key? 3 is less than 6. So this is true. So we call find node recursively, passing in the left child of root. The left child of 6 is 2. So again, we move to the left. And we're back here. We check is root null, or root is not null. Is key equal to root key? 3 is not equal to 2. Check is key less than root key? 3 is not less than 2. So we go to the else because key is larger than root key. And we call find node recursively passing this time root right. The right of 2 is 4. So we move to the right. We're back here, we check is root null, root is not null, we check is key equal to root key, no, is key less than root keys, 3 is less than 4, so this is true, so we return the result of calling find node recursively passing in root left, the left of 4 is 3. We're back here, we check is root null, root is not null, is key equal to root key, this time key is equal to root key, so we just return root, so we don't move to the left or to the right, we just return 3. And 3 was the left of 4, so the left of 4 gets a 3, and what it does, it returns it back. And 4 was the right of 2, so the right of 2 gets the 3, and it returns it. And 2 was the left of 6. So once the left of 6 gets a 3, we return it. So the final result is 3. The node with key 3, which is exactly what we were looking for. Let's now consider an example with a key that does not exist in the tree. For example, pan. We would call our function with root 6 and key 10. We check is root null, root is not null. We would check is key equal to root key, 10 does not equal to 6. We check is key less than root key, 10 is not less than 6. So we go to the else because 10 is larger than 6. So we'd call find node passing in the right of 6, which is 7. We move to the right. We check is root null, root is not null. Is key 10 equal to root key 7? No. Is key less than? No. 10 is greater than 7. So we move to the else. We call recursively by node passing in the right of 7, which is 9. We're back here. We check is root null, root is not null. Is 10 equal to 9? No. Is 10 less than 9? No. So we go to the else and we call find node passing in the right of 9, which is null. This time we check is root null, root is null, so we return null. So this was the right of 9, and the right of 1, 9 gets null. Once this is null, we return null. And 9 was the right of 7. So the right of 7 gets null. And once the right of 7 gets null, it returns it. And 7 was the right of 6. So the right of 6 gets null. And once it gets null, it returns it. So the final output would be null.
indicating that there is no node with k10 in this tree. Let's analyze the time complexity of this function. In the worst case, the key we're looking for is not in the tree, and we move all the way to the bottom of the tree along the longest path. Because in every call, we moving one level deeper by moving either to the left or to the right, this indicates that the total number of calls would be equal to the height of the tree. And because every call we're doing a constant amount of work, the total work associated with all the calls would be O of age. So the time complexity is O of age, where age is the height of the tree. This would be O of log n in case our binary search tree is balanced. Let's now analyze the space complexity. Because we have a function that calls itself recursively, the space complexity will depend on how big will the call stack grow. In the worst case, we're looking for a key which is not in the tree, so we move all the way to the bottom of the tree along the longest path, and the number of function calls would be equal to the height of the tree. So the space complexity is O of H, which is again O of log n if our binary search tree is balanced. You can find the link to the code in the description below. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section below.